All right, y'all. Welcome back. Welcome back to another episode of Hashtag CB99 Talks. It's Combo Breaker 99, of course. We live again. What's up? What's going on? It's episode 151. Dang, man, I've been doing this a while. You know, 151 ain't even really like a lot of episodes, though, because, you know, I've been out for a little periods of time. So, you know, still been doing this for a while now, man, like almost four years. Thanks steadily t- talking some WMMA with y'all for four years now. So, yeah, we back again. Um, got a got a good card coming up this weekend. And, yeah, Marcus Best say, yo, combo, what's up? Yes, sir, combo, yes, sir, six. Yeah, we back in the building. Back again. And we got this one coming up. It is UFC 300. So that's what we're going to discuss tonight or this this evening. I switched up the time, man, today, man, because I was cooking. So I said, let me jump on here and, um, you know, go ahead and knock this one out a little bit early. Yeah, yeah. So today we're going to talk. I ain't going to be on here too long because, yeah, I got some good. I'm I'm cooking up in the oven right now, and I started it a little bit early. So by the time I get off here, I can I can get it in, you know, for real. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just four years. I mean, um, steadily on WMMA, four years. Yeah. Am I going live for the fights? I am. I will be live for the whole card. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to be making sure I'm well rested for Saturday. I'm going to have everything I need right next to me because we're going to be going through the whole card. And I don't think it's going to be as long of a card. I think we're going to get a lot of finishes, too. So, yeah. I will say the UFC did a good job on that as far as the matchups. You know, I, I do think they did a good job as far as uh, putting explosive fighters together. That way we ain't got to go through another night of, um, you know, just decision after decision. Yeah, well, you know, decision ain't that bad, but I think it comes out down to more of a quantity thing. Like when you got like 14 to 15 fights, we got like 14 to 15 fights on the card. Yeah, it's going to be an all-nighter. But this one has, what, 11? I think 11 is fair enough, especially whenever you got everybody matched up that's going to try to knock the other person out or submit the other person, right? Let me go ahead and pull up the card here. Hold on, hold on. Let me see. Three. Oh, that's a fake card. Let me get this crap out of here. Who put this on Google, man? It's a fake UFC 300 card. I hate when people do that. All right. Three, six, nine, 12. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 12 fights that are most, for the most part, not guaranteed to go the distance. Right. We can't complain. Can't complain. All right. But you know what we're going to do over here? We're going to discuss these WMMA fights. And I think for sure, y'all, we, we ain't got to worry about no weight misses here. You know, I think that everybody here is disciplined. You know, Andrade has never been one to miss weight, right? Marina's never missed weight. Uh, Wei Lee, I don't even think we have to ask that question, right? Um, Yan Zhaonan, Holly, Holly, of course, you know, these are these are some real dedicated fighters. And Kayla, too. I mean, uh, Kayla, you know, she's 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 cut it down. She out here flexing and showing that, you know, she's been fine. So I'm hoping that she makes weight. If not. We might be getting a catch weight fight, but for the most part, I think that she'll be it, man. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah. um, Yeah, uh, it might be a little bit longer. Well, yeah, yeah, it, ha- it has been a little bit longer. I mean, since I've been doing this show, it's been like four years, but I've been doing this since. Um, I want to say, you know, targeting WMMA because it needed an audience I want to say yeah 2017 2018 so it's been about seven six seven years actually six seven years but as far as like just including boxing I'm talking like 10 10 you know I mean not like really just discussing it as much as I much as I do now but going on other people's channels and commenting and stuff like that until I said you know what I want to do my own thing you know so yeah, uh steadily about seven, eight, six, seven years. All right, all right. So um pulling up this card. Yeah, let's just take a look at the 12 fights before we discuss some of this uh 
WMMA action. Let me pull this thing up so I can get a clear image here. Because, yeah, we will go on and live and we will watch the whole card together. We're not going to BS here. And, you know, I'm not I'm not going to fall asleep. I'm going to try not to fall asleep Saturday night. Not I don't ever fall asleep. I'll be about to fall asleep sometimes. You know, I got to jump off and take a little break because that's what I did on that card on the 29th. You know, that uh, Blanchfield Fior card. I had to take a nap, man. I was like, this thing is dragging out. It was almost like, what, after one o'clock before we got to the main event? They weren't playing that night. They had that thing dragging out, man. I said, forget this. I'm I'm sleeping. I had to catch me a little nap after I ate. But I think with this one, we we got some good solid action that's gonna keep everybody entertained. All right. Hold up here, y'all. Gotta pull this card up. I'm trying to pull up the one here on Tap Ozzy. So okay, so here we go. Early prelims, right? Early prelim action. All right. Early prelim slash prelims is kicking off. Like I said, this is a future Hall of Famer right here. It's kicking off with Davidson, Figueredo, and Cody, Cody Garbrandt. Why it's kicking off with Davidson, Figgy, man? I don't know. It should really be, he should really be like headlining the the prelims card or on the main card to me, kicking off the kicking off the main card. But they got him starting off the action. All right, that band weight fights kicking off first. So yeah, um, Figgy all the way at the bottom now, man. Like that's crazy. I still, I still can't believe that. Then you got Bobby Green and Jill, Jim Miller. That's another fight that I believe this lightweight fight is probably going to go maybe inside three right and then the first wmma fight strawweight fight jessica andrade marina rodriguez we'll come back and talk about it yeah that's that's this is one i think it's not going to the cards if it's going to the cards somebody's going to be messed up either both of them are going to be messed up and somebody's going to have the they're, they're going to have they're going to show the, the wear and tear all right then you got another lightweight fight jalen turner and renato uh, mosiano moscano all right, Jalen Turner, whether he's on the losing end or the winning end here, I, I think that one's going to go inside three. All right. Then you got Sadiq Yosef versus Diego Lopez. Diego Lopez in his last fight, I mean, he put that uh, left hook on my man. What was his name? Hold on. Let me see. What was his name? That last fight, he scored a knockout. Yeah, yeah, P yeah Pat Sabatini, he knocked out for UFC uh, – UFC 295. I remember I was calling that one. So that's another one. This is another one. This this featherweight fight definitely not going the distance. All right. Then we got the bantamweight, or maybe maybe bantamweight fight. We'll see if it's a bantamweight fight. We got Holly Holm and Kayla Harrison. Could go the distance, but I think this one could end in a finish too. I think both fighters have the potential to get a finish. All right. Then you got Calvin Qatar and Aljamain Sterling. I could see a finish in this fight. I could see Calvin Qatar maybe rocking Sterling, but I could see Sterling finishing him on the ground. All right. I don't see I don't see Sterling finishing him on the feet, though. Um, light heavyweight fight, Yuri Proska versus Alexander Rakic. All right, that's another one. That that spells um that one spells finish. Okay, that's the headliner of the prelims. Then to kick off the pay-per-view card, like I said, Figgy should be in this position. But for to kick this one off, this middleweight bout between Bo Nickel and Cody Brundage, Brundridge, do y'all really see this one as a main main card worthy or paper pay-per-view worthy? Bo Nickel on pay-per-view. I know they want to build this dude up, but still, man, like he's only five and zero. Oh. To me, Cody is a good fighter you know he's a good test for him but i don't think he's like good test for him as far as like uh pay-per-view worthy action i ain't asked for this i ain't asked for that <laughs> i ain't asked for this but i think it'll end in the finish 
I think it'll end and finish as long as we move on through it. All right. Oh, another lightweight fight on this card. We got my man, one of my favorites, Charles Oliveira versus Armin. How do you pronounce his name? Is it Rukyan? Is it Rukyan? This should be good. This should be really good. I know Oliveira wants to get back in that title title picture. You know, um, question is, is Oliveira, some people think he's kind of fallen down a little bit. I think Oliveira's gotten better. You know, I think he'll be all right. I'm going with Oliveira in this fight. Still ride with him. All right, then the three title fights you got, Justin Gaethje versus Max Holloway for the BMF belt. It's a lightweight versus a featherweight, basically. <laughs> um, if Max Holloway can keep it standing, maybe he could do some damage, you know, damage Justin Gaethje. Justin Gaethje, I don't, I don't know, man. He'd be able to take his punch. He'd be able to take his punch. Justin Gaethje might just walk him down, right? So we'll see how that one goes. That's for that BMF title. Strawweight championship fight that we all looking for over here. Sean Wei Lee versus Yan Jana. That's right. Yan Jana got her shot. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know most people don't don't like that, but hey, got to rock with it. I'm cool with it. You know, she put herself in that position. So, yeah. I, I the question, I got the good question too when we talk about that fight. I got the good question coming up for that one. Oh man, UFC light heavyweight championship. Alex Pieta versus Jamal Hill. Dang, that's all I got to say about this one, man. Jamal Hill, he, I got to give Jamal Hill some credit, man. Like, this is one thing that makes me come to MMA a little bit more so than boxing as of lately because this dude, he's coming off quite the layoff. You know, serious injury, too. You know, Jamal Hill's got a serious injury. You know, last fight was january very getting into 2023 and he coming back over a year over a year off against double champ you know you know two-time champ you know dangerous fighter i mean i always wanted to see this fight but man like for jamal here to take this thing as a first fight this is scary this is very scary um all i can say is i hope for the best for jamal hill you know i'm rocking with jamal hill i'm a fan of him but uh, Pieta, I won't be surprised how this thing go, man, if Pieta come in here and, you know, do some work. But um, if Jamal Hill ain't Mr. Beat and he's he, he's wide awake and he knows what, what he's up against, hey, I'm, I'm hoping – I'm wishing him the best in this fight. Very dangerous first fight back. Hey, no 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 such thing as tune-ups in MMA, though, right? Every now and then you can have one, though, like as long as you're fighting somebody in the in the rankings, right? That's the thing about MMA, like everybody's a test, but I could be I could be cool with somebody like Jamal Hill not rushing right back into to, you know, a title shot, especially with his injury he had, right? Some people said it was possible, you know, possible career in the injury. So, you know, we'll see. All right, let me see what y'all talking about. Um pull this stuff up here. Okay, you said Charles is the man, nobody beating him with Islam. Yeah, Charles the man. I'm still, still big fan of Charles. You know, you know, never gonna, you know, change on that. You know, I love the striking, love his, how he throws his combinations, his ground game. You know, the only time I was really torn in that fight was with him and um Dustin Poirier, and I, I was like, I gotta go with Oliveira by submission, man. <laughs> All right, uh, Wei Lee versus Yan is gonna answer a lot of questions. It sure, it, it is. It's gonna answer the questions. I got a question for y'all. Gary said, never count on Jessica's fight IQ. Never. We never count on Jessica's fight IQ. I, who? Nobody's ever counted on that, Gary. I don't think. Like, who, who in here has ever counted on Jessica's fight IQ? I only count on her strength and her power. I think we only count on her strength and power. I don't think anybody ever put money or ever bets on her fight IQ. You know, ask, you know, ask. Aaron and Tatiana and all of them, they know what to expect. Uh, will Andrade get hit with that lunch tray special from Marina? Man, you get hit with it twice. Hey, we'll see. We will, we will see. Well, with that being said, let's talk about this fight first. Uh, Marina taking on Jessica Andrade. I never really, like I said, I didn't really think this fight was going to happen until they were somewhere in the midst of a title uh 
like a title eliminator or something like that because they have the same management. But when you run out of fighters, you run out of when you run out of opponents, eventually y'all gonna meet. You know, they're gonna meet. You know, Jessica Andrade, she's fought just about everybody at 115. Um, Marina, she's fought just about everybody at 115. Of course, there's some people they haven't faced, you know, um, because you know, Jessica Andrade, I will say like she has reached a higher level of it's obvious, you know, she has become become part of the elite. So she fought her way up, ran through a lot of fighters and was able to get the belt, fight some of the best. Uh, Marina, on the other hand, you know, she's always kind of been right there from the bottom to the middle, you know. Um, and it just came down to certain things that she didn't possess. And some things Andrade possessed that got her there. And, and, and this is like a clear to me, this is like a clear uh, showing of. Power. And strength can carry you to a certain level. It can carry you to a certain level. But it's always good to have IQ. That's why you got to be a well-rounded fighter. Like, because for one, Marina, she's got technique. She's got skill and she got some power. But, you know, she lacks. She's lacking on, on the ground, right? It's obvious. Marina lacks on the ground. She lacks takedown, de t takedown defense. Submission defense, she's good at. But I don't even want to see her down there. I want to see her sprawling and shaking people off you know you won't have to worry about defending submissions if you if you keep it standing right so yeah marina has things but she lacks a couple things and then you got just gonna draw the same thing she has a couple weapons she lacks a couple weapons just gonna draw got the power strong strong as crap you know got a good gas tank um thing she lacks is iq you know, she's got good leg kicks, but sometimes she just makes the wrong choices in there. So, yeah, I just think Jessica Andrade and Marina, the things that have um, kind of kept them from being dominant is, you know, obvious, you know, one lacks IQ, one lacks takedown defense. But going into this fight here, I think with what they both like to do, it's going to make this fight, it's going to make this fight exciting. All right, I think this is a good fight right here, y'all. I, I do. I think this is a good one. Um, I think that Marina, hold on here. I think Marina has a good chance to win this fight. You know, I do think she has a good chance to win this fight as long as, you know, they built up the strength. Um, and, you know, she depends on her jab a lot in this fight. You know, if she uses that jab, that's important, man. Got to use that jab in this fight. You know, you can't just go in there always depending on the right hand and the power, you know? So I want to see Marina, you know, take her time, pick her shots, you know, use her feet a little bit more. Don't go straight back. You know, the blueprint is there, you know, blueprint is right there to beat on dry. You know, she's got everything needed. Let me see. Her length is, I mean, height difference, obvious, you know, five, five, six, 65 inch reach to what just gone draws like five, one. They list her at. Yeah. 62 inch reach. So, yeah, this is a fighter she could, you know, just take a page out of the long, tall fighters and piece her up for however long she needs and then line up one of the big shots to get her out of there, you know. But you can't um, you, know, you can't look at uh, Jessica Andrade's resume and think that, OK, this sounds like an easy job. You know, she's 25 and 12, but everybody that beat Andrade, they were turned on, you know, they were focused. So as bad as we say. Jessica Andrade's IQ is your focus has to be turned on, right? Your focus still has to be turned on. Like you can't just go in there and say, oh, Andrade's lacking this. Oh, she lacking that. This going to be easy. Like as much as we say Jessica Andrade has a low fight IQ, she still is somebody you can't go in there and just sleep on or you get slipped. So, you know, Jessica Andrade definitely has what she needs to go in here. I mean, her power, her leg kicks are powerful. Uh, her, her right hand is powerful. It's just, you know, some of the choices she makes with her striking, man. Like, you touch her one time or two times and she comes running in, guns blazing, ready to knock you out. But she's got to be slower with that, man. She's got to take her time. Like, she's definitely somebody that I feel like if she fought a little bit slower, like, her knockouts will come faster. 
right? Like, pace yourself and the knockouts will come faster. You know, she worked her body a little bit more and took her time and planted her punches instead of just swinging wild, depending on, you know, just that element of surprise that she usually does, like just jump at you. Well, it ain't even a surprise anymore, right? It's not even a surprise anymore what Jessica does. So if she did that, I think she would knock more people out. I do. But really, I think this might be a fight where Andrade, we might see her on the ground. Like, what do y'all think? I think Andrade might actually go to the ground in this fight. Like, she hasn't really grappled in a long time. What, her last submission was that standing submission against Lamos? And before that, I think last person she submitted was, uh, I want to say JoJo. Yeah, I remember she submitted JoJo, like, way back. But other than that, like, you don't really, you never really saw her on the ground because she fell in love with that knockout power, right? And she never really had to go there. But fighting somebody like Marina, she might have to. You might, you're going to have to take this long girl down and take a page out of some of the other girl if you want to stay on the end of that jab and right hand and get knocked out. So I think you might see Jessica close that distance, maybe land some body work like she did against Chikagan in this type of fight. Or, you know, just take her down and try to uh, ground and pound or or look for that easy submission win. But then again, you know, Marina is hard to submit. Marina is hard to submit. But Andrade might look to put her on her back in this fight. Uh, there is no reason why Marina needs to be there, though. Like, for real. Like, Marina, she does not need to be. There's no reason she should be put on the ground in this fight. For Again, like, 12 ways to beat Andrade. And I think Marina can actually execute at least two or three of those or maybe three or four of those styles we've seen you just need to be using that jab but I, I, i'm gonna go with i'm gonna go with marina in this fight i think she can do it man you know i think that marina has the ability to do it what about y'all i know that if marina wins this fight she says she wants to call for that title my opinion i'm like okay yeah i mean I, i'm not gonna get mad at her i mean she's 36 years old and like if you can go in there and like knock on dry it out and actually call out the champion and get the shot. I mean, I'm not mad at you at this point because at this age, yeah, you you do want to go ahead and get the title, right? You you want to go ahead and get that shot at this point. Like at 36 years old, she's fought everybody. Um, you kind of want to put yourself in that position. I mean, for me though, I just think that it's going to be hard for her to get that because. There's other girls like Suarez and the two girls that beat her, like Lamos and Verna, that's ahead of her, that are in, you know, I think better standing. They, they can make a better argument. Well, Lamos not really right now. I mean, she does have the win over Marina, but Wei Lee done, you know, we remember Wei Lee did the Lamos. So really it's Suarez and Verna, because Suarez and Verna could fight, right? Suarez and Verna could fight, and that could be a winner of a title shot. But for um, for Marina, you know, you really have to have evolved. You know, you have to evolve to really stand the chance to not just to get the title shot, but to win the shot, to win the belt. And that's the one thing we haven't seen her come across since the losses to Lamos and Verna. Like, I haven't seen them put her in there with somebody, somebody that would have try to take her down like loopy suarez or somebody like that and she did call for the suarez fight right i mean shout out to marina like she don't duck nobody you know so that's why i would like to see her get her shot at some point because she don't duck nobody you know she called out suarez she did want to fight for the belt says she don't care who it is um so if, if she was to get it on her on her half at this on her behalf at this point fine i mean because something that she's always kind of went for, if she can get two in a row, hey, if she jumps ahead, I mean, if Suarez is still out, I mean, I would still want Suarez to get it right now. Well, no, Suarez needs to fight Verna. Suarez needs to fight Verna when she come back. That's what needs to happen. But um, however this works out for her, fine, you know. But on a serious path, if you want to, you know, work with, work on somebody that work with somebody that could test her wrestling and her grappling at this point, you know, loopy. Um, 
Could she beat Verna in a rematch? I don't know. You know, so we'll see. Yeah, Verna, man. Verna, she's she's in a she's in an okay place right now. She just came back and looked good. Uh, so you know, Verna, she could always say, let's reschedule the Tatiana Suarez fight for a title shot. So I think with that, they are in pretty good standing. But man, I, I do feel bad for um Marina too, man, because like what was she on? Like a four fight win streak at the time, and she had to fight one more time. But you know, when they had to put her in there with Lamos, and Lamos was ranked lower too. Like Marina was in perfect position to get that shot. She was, yeah, yeah. She had beat, you know, she had just knocked out Ebos and then beat Michelle Waterson and close fight with Jan Jan. I could argue Jan won that fight. Then she had uh beat what's her name? Mackenzie Dern too. Man, then they put her in there with Lamos too. She was, you know, she was in pretty good standing, but she had to come back and do that fight, and, and that kind of messed up her shot, man, from there. But, um, yeah. Yeah, so we, we'll see, man. We'll see. Um, Six said, if the UFC cut Maya, Marina ain't far behind. Uh, I wouldn't say that. Like, yeah, I actually agree. I actually agree with Zaman on that. Yeah, like, Marina is her her stand-up is a lot more entertaining like maya's not boring maya's a complete fighter like maya is a complete fighter that deserves to be be that deserves to still be here but uh marina getting cut i don't even see that like you're talking like she's cynthia cavillo or something man like no like marina makes weight marina fights marina's active you know she don't duck anybody marina ain't going nowhere like marina's not going anywhere um I'm not even sure if like Maya's situation, you know, could have just came down to like how they were get, negotiating their contract. I, I think Marina, you know, she's just in better standing when it comes down to it. Marina ain't going nowhere. Like her and Maya, two completely different paths. Cause you know, again, Marina, she, she brings the fights, you know, she brings the fights. So she loses this fight. She'll be back. She could lose another fight and be back, but I wouldn't want to see her do that. But, you know, um, just look at his resume, too. I mean, yeah, yeah, Jennifer Maya had a you know, really good resume, too, but Marina's only lost three fights. I believe Jennifer Maya does have, what, like 10-something 10, 10 something losses, you know? So, but again, how I see, I don't think either one of them were really on the path of being cut. That was just out of out of nowhere <laughs> that really was so i really can't say on that but um yeah man should be good i think however it goes we're gonna be we're gonna be up here screaming you know for somebody to get up wake up somebody might be sleeping this fight man <laughs> oh man so before we uh jump to the next fight who do y'all got andrade or rodriguez what is it paul says one for put one for Andrade and two for Rodriguez. I'll say I'll do two. I'm I'm gonna start it off. I'm gonna do two for Rodriguez. I'll do two for Rodriguez before we jump to the next fight. Robot said Marina still has Verna and Lamos problems. So always Strawy needs a complete fighter like Whaley. I'm tired of the build exchanges. Hey, I mean. Whaley need to, you know, Whaley better make sure she complete too. You know, anything can happen. You know what I mean? So we do need a complete fighter. We do need one. Flyways, Flyways got a number of fighters that I consider near complete fighters that, you know, they they could, you know, have Grasso lose the belt, um, and no one could win it, and she could hold it longer than one title defense. I think um valentina could win it back i think valentina will hold it more than one title defense you know all right so let's see i said to brian says to victor says to zaman says to which is all for marina six is going with andrade okay andrade all day with marina gabby says winner fights verna or lamos again i wouldn't be mad at that either i really wouldn't be mad at that the one thing that 
Andrade has that Marina don't have is that that um, she does have that experience of being in high level fights and big cards. You know, this is a big card. UFC 300 is a big one. So we'll see, you know, well, I don't ever see Marina like clamming up like that. You know, Marina don't clam up like that, but we'll see how the pressure is on them. Um, I think for the most part, the pressure will be fine, especially for Andrade, because I wanted to say, uh, you know, Andrade, she has fought some fighters that Marina hasn't fought, so she should be able to handle some of the pressure and style here. You know, she Andrade's fought Joanna, Rose, and Wei Li. Those are three fighters that we never see Marina fight. And Marina's fought Carla before, right? In Ebos. <laughs> uh, they both fought Dern. They both share custody with Dern, right? Andrade knocked, oh, she knocked the crap out of Dern. But Marina Rodriguez schooled Dern, right? They both own custody of her. That's their daughter. Um, who else is on their resume that's similar? Yeah, Carla. Marina's only fought Carla. But yeah, again, yeah, um, Andrade's fought all those champions too. Marina's has as the one champion, right? And I think that's about it. Uh, they both fought Jan Jana. And man, you could argue Jan Jana beat both of them, all right? Like Jan Jana, close fight with Marina, and she knocks out Andrade. So styles make fights. It's an interesting world. It's an interesting world. But I think that Marina got what it takes in this one. Uh, Mark said, I got Marina. Okay. Oh, close from said Marina covered up after Lamos clipped her. I, I would too. I would cover up too if I, you know, if I know I ain't coming, if I ain't know I ain't gonna be in for another two or three, I ain't gonna take no more of them shots. Shoot, she covered up. Hey, she didn't want that. She didn't want no more, man. I mean, hey, what can you do? If, if you if you get if you get clipped in the world of box and you cover up so you don't eat any more shots, but if you eat some more and the referee sees you about out, you gotta you get stopped. You know, that's just it. Like you gotta cover up. I, I wouldn't say take any more, right? I wouldn't say stick your chin out, Marina. Keep getting hit. Keep getting hit till you get your eye knocked out, you know? He said, my point is, can she take Andrade's power shots? Okay, better question. My point is, can she take Andrade's power shots? I don't think anybody can take Andrade's power shots clean like that. Like, I don't think anybody will take Lamo's away Lee's power shots clean like that. I mean, unless your name is Dern, but even then, eventually you're going to get knocked out, right? But the point is not to get hit with them things and to you, you know, stick that jab out, like I said, what Marina needs to do. But yeah, like, if she was to get hit with one of them clean shots, I don't know. The whole point is not don't get hit, right? When you fight on Andrade is don't get hit. Easy, what's up, man? Dern is Whaley's big, besides me, Dern is Whaley's biggest fan. Dern is Whaley's biggest fan. Well, I guess that's all she will. No, nah, let me stop. I was going to say that's all she will be because uh, she won't fight for one day. I mean, well, when you have that approach, it's not good because you might freeze up and you might not. Let me stop. Okay. Let's go to the next one, man. All right. So Holly Holm. And Kayla Harrison at maybe 135. I'm going to call this the maybe Bantamweight fight. Okay. I'm going to call this maybe the Bantamweight fight. All right. Before we jump into it, hold on. Uh, he said, unless your name is Dern. <laughs> she can take a shot now. Dern can take a shot. She did take them shots from Lamos. She did take them shots from Lamos. Of course, Lamos showed lack of IQ in that fight. And that's why I'm saying, like, the fight game is is so weird, man, because, like, Lamos showed bad fight IQ by diving in there with Dern when she could have knocked her out, right? Where Andrade was standing Dern up so she could knock this girl out. So you just never know. Easy say, I got to catch up on all the interviews and pre-fight stuff. I haven't seen anything. I know, man. I just did a few more videos that he put out because I just started looking this week, like, yesterday and today man i've been kind of busy i've been kind of busy so yeah i was um 
I was just really getting into it now. MMA art said, Kayla looks unrecognizable. No way this girl never used steroids. Ooh. Mm. You think she looks unrecognizable? I think she looks like, I think she looks the same in the face. I think she does look, look the same in the face, like same face all the way around. But I mean, like body wise, of course, her body looks different. Still got muscle. But, um, yeah, I mean, as far as physique wise, yeah, she would be unrecognizable. She really will be unrecognizable. She step on step on that scale, though. Um, I am used to seeing her wider, of course, but she does look slimmer, yeah. Which she should, yeah. Right. Yeah, I I I think so too. I think she looks a little better. I think she looks a little better than I expected. I really expect expected her to look a little bit more like drained and malnourished but as far as her definition muscle mass still looks good it looks like they took the right approach i mean look at her abs not even by this picture if you look at her recent interviews like you look at how she looks in in uh her regular clothes uh her her cheeks don't really look sunk in or nothing like she don't have any extra bags or dark circles or anything like she's been having a hard weight cut um and we'll see. We'll see when she steps on that scale, though. I and mean, we'll see how it affects her in the cage. But, uh, not, you know, not bad. Not bad. I mean, to me personally, I think she looks good. You know, I think she looks good, you know, physically. Um, you know, her body does. You know what I mean? Like, I think she does. But let me see. I'm trying to match. I was trying to match up early when I was looking between her and Holly. Like, does she almost look as trim as Holly? Oh, she still got a little bit more size to her. Uh, uh close from said, even if people make even if Kayla makes weight, people still complain. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not, man. Like, I'm glad that she did make weight. Like, that was the problem. Like, that was my issue. Like, you know, um, uh, is this gonna be a thing where she comes in and tries to be a catch weight fighter or or force the featherweight action? But no, nah, she did she did it, man. She made the weight, like. She cut herself down, so I, you know, I can't get mad. Like they, they took the, they took the right approach. They took the right approach, man. I'm definitely not going. You know, I'm actually think, thinking she looks good. You know, that I still got some things to say about her. Well, I'm gonna talk here in a minute, but we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll get into that. But yeah, given um, Kayla, you know, is gonna come through and make weight. Hopefully, I think that. We should have an interesting fight here. Um, you know, we got to see if Holly Holm and working with Chris Cyborg is going to really be a benefit to her. Uh, we'll see. I really want to see if, you know, Holly can kind of dig back in that well or even kind of revamp herself and um, show a new striking method that somebody like, you know, Kayla and none of us have seen before. And I want to see if Holly has that ability to, you know, take her time. Don't throw as many telegraph combinations, uh, you know, fight a little bit gritty and dirty in there with some elbows and um, go to Kayla Harrison's body. And, and, and I want to see if she has the foot still has the uh, the stamina to move because she will need it in this fight. You know, I don't think there's going to be a situation where Holly going to want to clinch fight too much or um give her any type of underhook in this fight or don't even let her touch you in this fight when it comes comes down to an inside fight you know i want to see if holly still has that um that gas tank to move like she used to because she's gonna need it in this fight you're gonna need it uh looking here at uh, some of these interviews with kayla harrison though like what do y'all think man like kayla harrison you know, Kayla Harrison making this move over for greatness. Like, do you really think it is that? Like, do you really think that she's over here for greatness? Uh, or is it uh, to maybe get that UFC stamp at least at some point in her career? Like, I knew eventually she would be over here to the UFC, but is it really for chasing greatness at this point? Like, whenever you 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 know you got all the money and you had the possibility of having greatness come to you when you were at pfl because right now 
I think that, yeah, okay, you're in the UFC now, but is this a division that you can really solidify your legacy in right now? Like, and walk away and say you, you, you will be considered in the talks with you know Valentina, in the talks with Amanda Nunes, of course. Amanda's a, all the way up there, right? Amanda. Um, or even like a Joanna at this point, like, can she come over here and get a belt and run this division and be fine with that? Like, would we be fine with that with then saying, okay, she deserves a spot on somebody's Mount Rushmore? I don't know, though, man, because, like, I just think that with the way she was moving in PFL, I was I was okay with that. I was all right with that, man, like. Yeah, Zaman, I know. I got a video talking about that, like how she wants to lure her out of time, um, retirement. But still, that goes in hand in hand with what I'm talking about, about her chasing greatness. Like coming over here in a division she's never fought at, that is probably going to be tough on her after, you know, maybe a couple more fights. We'll see, though, as far as making weight. Like, is it really worth that chase to? Say, okay, let's say you beat Holly Holm. And then maybe you beat Rocky Pennington. Uh, Colson said, Combo, you said she should come to the UFC. Now she's here. Well, look at the situation, though. Like, situations changed since then, right? Situations have changed big time. I mean, like, yes, you should have came to the UFC when um chris cyborg wasn't over at pfl right yes she should have came when they still had more featherweights okay but why come to the ufc now when you had the chance to fight somebody that could help make you great right yeah i remember saying that definitely but the the lay, the lay of the land has changed since then right come to the ufc when there's potential for featherweights or if Amanda's still active or if Chris Cyborg didn't come to the PFL when that's who you have a lot of history with, right? That makes more sense. So that's what I was saying. Like if you go to the UFC now and Amanda's retired, like is that really chasing greatness when Amanda's already um, retired? I'm just saying, like, the uh, coach said they would have never signed her at 130, 145. They're the only three girls in the featherweight division. Uh, you, you proved my point again. You proved my point again. And so why, when PFL brings in a whole bunch of featherweights, why not stay at PFL? Thanks for helping me on that. Because I'm just saying, like, you could go over here where there are at least some featherweights. Chelsea will move up to featherweight. Norma Dumont would have stayed at featherweight to fight her. Macy Chason would have stayed up to fight her. But if you go over to, if you stay in PFL when they just bring in some more uh, featherweights, then you should be good to go, right? That's more than enough, right? Again, so 145, Bellator is signed to PFL. That sounds that sounds more. That sounds logical. That sounds a lot more logical. But now, again, you're in a weight class, 135, that doesn't offer much. And you got a fighter like you want to lure out of retirement. What is that going to prove, though? You know, what is that really going to prove? That's a question. Like, I would rather her fight Chris Cyborg and then try to lure Amanda out of retirement. If that truly is the game plan, which it sounds like it is, right? Because she stood to make a lot of money for fighting Chris Cyborg. You know, she already makes more money than um, she already makes a lot more money than a lot of the WMMA fighters in the UFC, too. You know, so. Zama said beating Nunez is the only chance to claim GOAT status in the eyes of casuals. Uh, 
yeah, that's true. Yeah, in the eyes of casuals, but not not over here. I'm definitely not gonna fall for that. That's why I say, like, you know, if she wants somebody at least legit that's still that's still fighting, it it would have to be a Chris to to be on that high level, you know. But like coming to the UFC now, Colostrum, like I said, does it really make sense like that? Especially if it's in a weight class that you're not really been it. Come on, no, no, I don't. Like it really don't. Uh, Coach said, if Kayla had fought Chris Cyborg, who else is there to fight her in the PFL? Well, if you fight Chris Cyborg, I mean, or before you fight her, you could have fought uh, Leah McCourt. You know, you could have fought uh, Kat Zingano. Like, they're in the same condition as her. At least Leah McCourt is a little bit fresher than some of these girls at Bantamweight over here now, right? Like, those are still some fighters she could fight, like. Shanae Kavanaugh, she could fight these girls B before you actually fight that big one with Chris Cyborg. Then we can actually say she has legit names on her resume, some common opponents. Arlene Blinko, you fight those fighters, and then we can say, okay, well, Kayla's beat these girls, the same girls as Chris. Now we got to fight. Makes sense, right? Because I don't, I don't think that they wanted to put her right in there right away so they could have let her fight some of the other names in there you know let, let just let her fight some other names that are over there in bellator get some common opponents because that was the whole point remember that's the whole point like kayla was fighting some of the pfl competition that didn't really have a threat to her right so give her somebody big like leah like put that name on your resume a heavy wrestler like sarah mcmahon like put some of them big girls that's going to try to fight her on the ground or, or give her a rematch with that marina marina hotnika you know, Marina was probably one of the better opponents that she's fought. To me, next to Pacheco, Marina Mahatnika was like one of Kayla Harrison's toughest opponents. You know, if you want to. Yeah. Yeah. She's probably one of the ones that made her fight. So that was my whole point. Like, yeah, like she had people. She had people over there to fight. But that's still a different weight class, though close me like that's a different weight class you know well norma's not but um holly macy at 135 though but those would have been good fights at 145 but then okay well if you really want to chase somebody that's like a legend you got chris is still active you know so, yeah, that's just what I was kind of thinking about. I was like, is she really, you know, looking for something, you know, like that, that sounds legit? But, yeah, when you think about it, it just sounds like she's here to maybe do what Chris Cyborg is doing to her. Like, you know, Holly Holmes got Chris Cyborg in her corner. So, you know, maybe Kayla feels like, OK, if I can lure Amanda Nunes out of retirement and I can beat somebody that not Chris Cyborg out that might sound a little bit better right <laughs> yeah yeah all those girls in natural featherweights yeah of course norma dumont just fought her first true bantamweight fight macy came in in the tough challenge of featherweight she won the featherweight uh, she won the tough house featherweight edition yeah of course those they're all natural featherweights but the point is, Kayla did have a good fight. She did have she did have a nice little setup over there at PFL, financially and competition wise. Over here, we ain't really working with much, and you know that. As much as y'all call this the sleepy phantom band weight division and phantom weight division, we ain't gonna change it up now. Cause y'all are the ones that don't like the band weight. I'm I'm keeping it the same here. That's what I'm saying. Like if Kayla comes over here right now, she ain't really working with much. <laughs> You know, the bandweight division is still the same. I mean, Kayla's coming in, bringing a little something. You got these new girls that are signing in, but this ain't really like that type of division that's going to bring that uh, resume to Kayla Harrison at this point, right? Easy said Cyborg fighting Pacheco have to do with Kayla. Yeah, nothing. 
nothing right now. Um, yeah, Cyborg, I mean, Cyborg Pacheco ain't really got nothing to do with it because, you know, the beef, the beef comes between Kayla and Cyborg, man. Cyborg and Kayla, they the ones got the beef going right now, you know, but um, Cyborg and Pacheco got a fight coming up in June. So, uh, I mean, it still come down to it. Cyborg fighting another tough one. She fighting a girl that beat her, so. But let's see, man. Holly Holm. Can Holly Holm do what she needs to do to pull off this upset? I think she can, man. I, I think Holly Holm, if she's like, like I said, if she's taking in what she's learning from her team this time, you know, she's kind of looking back at some of the old fights and just taking that time and just thinking about, you know, looking at the big picture again and just saying, you know, I want to be back in that win column. You know, I want to prove that I am one of the best fighters. You know, I think Holly Holm, she could do it, man. Are they really fighting in June? I think so. I believe she's fighting a boxing match in April, but yeah, they should be locking it in in June. It's already been talked about. So, and you know what? Look, I ain't gonna act like Chris gonna be ducking somebody at this point now. Like, like I mean, you kind of pushing it back, but I think there'll come a point where she has the fighter. Like, I have to look at her resume and say, you know, we don't fought everybody. Amanda done knocked her out like at this point and you know she's come back and fought a lot of fighters so you know I really wouldn't put her in a category of um, trying to avoid that fight because really, there's really no way to avoid that fight I mean unless you left and went somewhere else right easy said Kayla Harris is not going to touch the UFC bantamweight belt it, it's some work it's going to be some work she'll find you know I think she knows it's going to be a lot of work, you know, making that weight. Um, so easy. Do you believe whether it's Rocky Pennington or Juliana Pena? Do you think either one of them is going to stop her from getting the belt? I mean, I do agree with Rocky Pennington, too. She was feeling like, oh, I don't think this girl's ready for a title shot, which she's not. You know, you don't just come in and then, boom, you get a title shot. Fight Holly Holm, you get a title shot. I still want to see uh Kayla Harrison do something in this division just like Alexa Grasso had to do right you know Alexa Grasso she moves up to the flyweight she still has to put in the work before she fights Valentina you know so I think same thing goes with Kayla Kayla coming in from PFL not even moving up from a UFC weight class but got to put in the work you know get you two or three wins make us say okay she's legit But, yeah, at this point, yeah, six, I agree with that. Yeah, I think at this point, um, I think Kayla could just come in and, you know, just kind of do her thing. You know, she could just come in and do her thing, pick up a couple of wins. And um, if, if, if Amanda Nunes doesn't come out of retirement, then I don't think there'll be, like, any reason for her to really stay stay around, you know. Gabby said Mike Chandler got was able to do that. Kayla could get that title shot. Yeah, you could. She could. But we saw how it wound up for him, right? I'm just saying. You said Dom said at least she didn't get the title shot immediately. Yeah, that would have been crazy. Like, they wouldn't do that. But like, I don't think she'll get she deserves a title shot off of this fight. I don't think she deserves a title shot for this one, though. Not at all. Uh uh. But we'll see how this this fight goes Saturday. Um, like I said, I think this one is going to have some explosion. I don't really see it being. It's not going to be a fight where Holly goes in there and clinches up. You know, it's not going to be one where she clinches up and tries to hold or anything like that um yeah you know uh-oh bj in the building back talking that trash i know that uh walter bell in the building walter bell we were trying to call for smoke the other day i had to call him out you know i gotta put you on the spot walter bj you know i gotta put walter on the spot because he over here talking about how i address the address the chat so you know i gotta put you on the spot just like i put bj on the spot you know i gotta call for smoke 
<laughs> over there talking about what i ain't talking to people in the chat you ever try to talk to 500 people 500 comments in the chat and like i said hey it's just like we do at the gym man like when people try to mess around the gym i'd be like yo what, what's up you know <laughs> i'm just saying uh, walter you over there talking that talking that trash i know but it's all good i don't block people off that yeah ain't nobody too good for smoke not over psh, come on man ain't nobody over man we you know i do that before i block somebody you know i do i you know i put you on the spot before i block you um six said holly catches kayla with a high kick at this point will she be throwing them like that you know i hope so i hope she can still bring out that athleticism yeah you know, i hope she brings out that athleticism and she's able to move and throw some nice little unpredictable combinations and you know expose the striking defense just don't let just don't let kayla get close and tight on her man like i hope that chris cyber wherever they're working on you know they are working on, on her using her striking and her combinations you know just keep it moving that's all i want to see him do in this fight all right But I really hope that junk, man. I really hope. I really hope if Kayla gets this victory, man, I don't want to see her get a title shot off of this off of this fight. I really hope not. Please no. Easy says she got Aldana up there, and I don't think Kayla could even out wrestle Misha Tate at this point. Really, you don't think Kayla could out wrestle Misha Tate? Hmm. See, that's an interesting style because you know they come they play into each other and i think kayla is physically stronger <clears throat> yeah irena aldana man like irena aldana gonna have to make sure her takedown defense is on point because she definitely got the, the hands but she got the takedown defense to stop uh kayla harrison that would be the question but we'll see how she looks man we got to really see how she looks on this fight night man Close from said Irina Daldana versus Rocky. Um, they already fought before. Rocky beat her. It was it was okay. Like it was all right fight. It wasn't like the best fight, but it wasn't like a great style matchup. Uh, Caitlin Vieira versus Kayla Harrison. That's an interesting one. The two big girls right there. We'll see. Uh oh, I knew I knew I was coming. Look, BJ said she may be stronger than Misha Tate, but is she a technical? Is he as technical grappler as Misha? He said no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I just think that strength is gonna come into play at this point with this type of fight, man. When I just kind of look at how fights play in, like I again, I would be rooting for Misha, you know, because she's a long time vet up in there, and I'd like to see her show her something. But if Kayla does it, she earns it. Kayla going there and thrashes her, falls in her game plan. Shoot. We just said Kayla ain't out striking Misha. How long would it stand? How long would they strike for? <laughs> the question is, hopefully, Tate don't get any like flashbacks, you know, the Ronda fights too, because you know that style, that style kind of, you know, plays into her. Six said uh, Kayla's going to get that title shot if she wins. I hope not. Who else would have more hype if she wins? Well, you still got the number one, Juliana Pena, right there. You know, you still got Juliana Pena, even though she's been out two years. So maybe they would make them two fight. Right? But um, I, 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 I'm kind of excited about this fight now. I know I really wasn't at first. But I'm more ex look. I'm more excited about this one than I'm definitely more excited about this than Liz Carmouche and Juliana Velasquez three. Okay, so <laughs> I am looking for a good fight with these two. Uh, Easy says strength is not going to be as much of an advantage though. She's going to keep making one thirty five. She can't bulk up unless she wants hard cuts. Mm, okay. It won't be as much of an advantage in a Misha Tate fight. 
I think her explosiveness still could be a problem in that fight. Maybe not like, of course, like it won't be like the the lightweight or even featherweight Kayla Harris. But I think her strength and uh, maybe what they work on in strength and conditioning could still still give uh, Misha an aging. You know, let's not let's be real. Misha Tate ain't the same age anymore. You know. Irenia versus Myra Buena Silva. Um, I would like to see Myra Buena Silva versus Norma Dumont, actually. Yeah, I like Myra Buena Silva versus Norma Dumont. I think Myra, I think Myra, not Myra, but I think Norma is actually, you know, doing some good things for the division or trying to, at least. I mean, I can't really say for Bantamweight as a whole because this was her first one, but as far as a fighter, I think she does, you know. I'm going to send Myra to the mat. I want to see that fight. I um, hope she can make that weight. BJ said, I ain't taking away from Misha Tate. <laughs> he said, I didn't say she was. He's, don't, don't, BJ say, hey, BJ coming with it. Look at Brian. Brian said, I read it wrong. See, Brian always be reading it wrong. See, you got to get him sometime, BJ. <laughs> see, he was so quick to jump on. So quick to jump on BJ. BJ said, let me see BJ getting smoke in the chat too. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's much more fun that way, right? <laughs> BJ, BJ said, I ain't taking away from Misha Tate. He said, I didn't say she wasn't. Misha's a better MMA grappler than Kayla Harris. <laughs> see, Brian, Brian, Brian said he read it wrong, man. Come on, boy. Better read that comment. Said, easy he says she's not going to be much stronger than holly and tate will use kayla's leverage against her strength is not the answer at this level um see i think kayla i think kayla would actually use her leverage against her though see that's the thing i think kayla would be able to use her leverage against her you know with even with her judo at this point and you know i still got to give her credit you know she holly remember still has a lot of wear and tear so i still think strength Strength is not a full on answer, but it's still a part of how you attack and how much wear and tear is you on your body. Like Kayla hasn't really fought this level of competition in MMA. So I think she'll be still a little bit fresher when it comes to her strength. Like her strength will still be a factor in this fight, even with Holly. You know, Holly's still got, of course, Holly Holmes got that old woman's strength. But as it goes down, maybe if it goes past round two and round three, you know, I still look at how. Uh, how much less wear and tear has been on Kayla Harris? If that makes sense. <laughs> Brian said, "Like y'all never read something wrong." I would, Brian, you always be doing that though, man. <laughs> so you know, I'm messing with you, but you always. And let me pull this up. Okay, Pena submits Misha. I don't think they'll ever fight. I don't think they'll ever fight. I I won't know because they just don't have that energy to, towards each other. But we, we got a good fight coming. I think the way we talking about this and the way we talking talking some junk about Holly and so on. Not Holly, but Kayla and so on. Everybody want to see this fight, man. Everybody want to see something go down. I mean, it's 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 made now. You know, Kayla's here. Holly home. You know, she's never wanted to back out of a fight. Let, let's. Let's have a toast for Holly Holm as far as never being a ducker. Like, Holly Holm is one fighter we can never say duck somebody. As many people that are still legends in the game, people always try to make the argument, oh, this person's that good, but I think they duck so-and-so. You can't never say that about Holly. You can't never say that about Holly Holm, though. Honestly, you can't never say that about Tisha either. You know, somebody like Tisha Torres, you know. Tisha Torres never done it. Holly Holm never done it. You know, but you can never say that about Holly as far as fighting on this high level. Holly ain't duck nobody. Anybody tell me Holly home duck, I'm going to be like, hey, prove it. Prove it or shut up. May have lost to some people, but hey, she lost to the best fighters. Because if she turned one, she turned around to fight, you know what y'all would be saying. Oh, she duck. So, so I'd rather see do what she do in the cage against some of these fighters 
maybe take an L, but hey, that's all right. Because Holly fought, fought everybody, Amanda, Rhonda, Valentina, Cyborg. Now she over here fighting Kayla Harrison, you know, because they try and set her up. But hey, I think she can pull off this upset. All right, so let's do it again. Um, one for Holly, two for Kayla. I'm gonna be a fan pick here. I'm gonna go with uh I'm gonna give one for Holly. You give two for Kayla. GDR versus Kayla Harrison. Oh man. Um well if it's that Kayla Harrison, well if it's that GDR that fought Saturday night, I'm gonna go with Kayla in that fight. Cause I was really disappointed in GDR when she looked on her back, but then I had to take a little you know, I had to remember that, hey, she's um she'd been out for almost four years. Norma stopped Melissa Mullins, yet she didn't get ranked. Yeah, that's crazy. She should have a rank, she should have her spot. You know. A yeah, good body shot for it though. Good body shot. Yeah, yeah, uh, you know, GDR, like, I, you know, GDR, like, I would, if she came in as stars normal, of course, I would be picking her again over Kayla, but I think Kayla would beat GDR at this point. You know, a lot of wear and tear and just the way she got put on her back. And, you know, I think Kayla has the answer on how to get in on somebody who's just long, long strikers at this point. Like, Okay, so Holly, Easy Holly, Six Holly, Brian Holly, BJ Holly, Colostrum said nothing but the dose, dose. Colostrum, he's <laughs> Colostrum, he's got two for, he's got all these two so they can outnumber Holly. <laughs> how many? How many is that? So one, two, three, four, five. Man, my eyes. Hold on. That's my eyes. Two, four, five. That's nine votes for Kayla Harrison, all by, all by Colstrom. All right, I think we all play that game. Here you go. This is all Holly right here. Holly's going to win. <laughs> Six said GDR always fighting with a confused look on her face. <laughs> hey, she still win, though. Okay, Zaman said he's got Kayla, too. All right. Kayla by decision. Okay, that's fair. At least Colostrum didn't say she's going to go in there and get starched. That, that's real. I like that pick, Caleb by decision, you know, still giving Holly Holmes some credit that she's tough and, you know, Holly don't really get stopped in there, okay? The GDR fight with a confused look on her face? Like, it wasn't confused that night when she fought Aspen Ladd, I'll tell you that. All right, enough. Let's, let's, let's keep this thing moving. Let's keep it moving. Having a good show. All right, make sure y'all hit that like button. And uh, we'll talk about the championship fight now. Okay. Zhang Wei Li versus Yan Zhanan. Gabby says she's got split decision for Kayla. Okay. Excuse me. Okay, Brian said this fight is basically the same as Manon and Aaron. It's 50 50 until we see how it goes. Which fight? This Wei Li or Yon? Wei Li Yon or Holly Kayla? Do we really need to talk about this murder? Yes, we need to talk about this murder. If we're talking about it, just call me the Undertaker. Um, Wei Li versus Yon. Is it really a murder, though, man? Like, can it really be? Like, Yan Zhan definitely has some things that could help her win this fight, man. Like, she definitely has some tools in here. Okay, Brian said Holly Kayla. Okay. 50 50. Okay. 50 50. 50 50. Like Holly Manone. Okay. Okay. All right. So, you think Yan will survive? Okay. Yan has some tools in here to survive she also has some tools to actually win the fight too um i think the only thing like i was saying the other day that kind of makes it hard to pick her in this situation is that Wei Li is ever evolving you know like 
I think I think those Rose losses kind of woke her up to what she needed to do. Like I think Wei Lee was always a good martial artist, a good fighter, but sometimes you gotta lose to get better, you know. And I think that losing the Rose in two different fashions, like getting knocked out and then kind of getting out wrestled, right? In the second fight, getting put on her back a couple times in that fight, it kind of opened her eyes to what she needed to do. So I think out of the cage who she's linked up with even working with marab now too and you know taking her strike to another level then she worked with nonito donaire so she's she's really been getting some good help in training so i think a lot of that has kind of put her in, on this other level of just being a complete fighter and then you know that's i know we don't see it we can't see it like in like performance after performance but you get to see it in training right you get to see her put it all together man but i don't know man i really don't know um yawn i give her a chance but i can't really put that high of a chance like as close as i've as i felt like um what was her name no not not lamos uh like i i think I think, um, of course, you know, Suarez, she's built for that. You know, I think Suarez, she has a style built for a Wei Li type of fight. But we have yet, we'll see, you know, we'll see Saturday night if uh, Yan Zhan, she goes in there and uh, can prove that she is that complete fighter. Uh, the kickboxing style of Yan Zhan, I think it could, it could bring some issues here. It could bring some issues. Uh, the footwork alone, granted, you know, she doesn't kind of get a little cagey or, you know, she doesn't get a little uh, uh, frantic from the Whaley pressure. You know, if she's able to throw a good jab down the pipe to the chin and just, just kind of fight at that pace until she can find that opening. Like if she can bait Whaley into thinking that she's, you know, going to let her take her down, you know, she just needs to open up with those long punches in this type of fight. But I know, like, that sounds you just said and done, right? But when it comes down to is how will she handle the inside, I think. And that's the thing. People are always going to say, if Wei Li gets her hands on her, it's over, right? And, I mean, we've seen how Carla did it, right? Carla Carla put her on, on the ground. That was crazy, man. Carla just, you know, worked her and brutalized her. And we ain't too far from that, but. I'm going to give Yan Zhan on some credit and hope that she's really worked on that and really put her that strength and conditioning to work. And she's going to use that physique that she has because, you know, she's she looking a little bit big. You know, Yan, she, she's a, she's not a small straw weight. She ain't long like Joanna and them, but you know, that long frame like Rose. But she's a good size straw weight. That's why when I see her put on her back, I'd be like, man, like this girl needs to use that physicality. So hopefully they're working on that. But I don't really think physicality is going to be a huge huge um advantage for yan in this type of fight since she never really was that type of fighter but hopefully on a defensive uh perspective hopefully she can use it that way like only when she gets in close man um you know way lee though like way lee she's just been here for you know for a while now with the, dealing with the pressure and training on a high level and uh, seeing this, seeing similar styles before, like Joanna Rose, these type of strikers. So I think she knows how to get her shots off. She knows how to get on the inside now. I mean, when she stood in there with Lamos, she dropped Lamos with a right hand. You know, so I think we all know that Wei Li Ye is like closest thing to the complete fighter at straw weight now. Especially now that Rose is gone, right? You know, now that Rose is gone out of the division, you know, Wei Li is that one seen as the most complete fighter she's got the belt and uh she's fought some good competition and she's shown some evolution in her style okay but can the, the question i have though man can whaley break this one title defense curse that's the thing like i know on paper whaley by massacre Easy he thinks it's going to be a murder, right? You think it's going to be a slaughter, but 
What about this curse, though, man? Like, every champion after Ioana has defended that belt only one time. So that, that that's the question. Like, on paper, we think Whaley's going to win, but there's this curse that just stands in the way of saying, nope, you can only defend your belt one time. And we do have a fighter that is legit, has been working, and has a particular style that could almost break that, that, that could almost keep that curse going, man. <laughs> you could almost keep that curse going again, man. You know what I mean? Like, um, Easy said, what does Jan do that Whaley do hasn't seen before? Um, what does she do? What does Jan do that Whaley hasn't seen before? Let me think. What can she do? Well, I think the question more is, what will she use that can just be her advantage in this fight? You know, because you can see something before, but if you're able to use something that makes somebody kind of freeze up or frustrate them, you keep using it, right? Because I just got done saying, like, she's already seen Joanna before. You know, she's seen, Yo you know, she sees Joanna style. She's seen Rose style. She's seen Lamos style as far as strikers, right? She's already seen those type of fighters before. But as far as like something different, I think it just comes down to utilizing what she has that could be a problem. And that's her footwork and her rangy strikes. You know, you just got to use rangy strikes, use uh, the footwork. So it all depends on if Wei Li is 100 percent on lock to know how to close the distance and not eat jabs and just get on the inside and just make her frustrated. Yon just has to utilize her size like Manon. And that's going to be hard to do. That's going to be hard to do because, you know, she doesn't really use it that much. You know, I know Manon doesn't really, but I think behind the scenes, you know, Manon, they do a lot of wrestling and grappling and their takedown defense is like combined with that. So they're always working on that behind the scenes. Hopefully that um, I know that now that Yon has been with Uriah Faber, they have been working, but. I don't know, you know, if it's going to amount to the same experience of like a Manon using her size. And that was a big size difference then, you know, um, when, when you look how Aaron looks compared to Manon versus uh, uh, Yan and um, Wei Li. And again, you know, Wei Li, uh, much more well-rounded than Aaron, right? And more explosive and bouncier on the feet. You know, she can move on the feet, right? So, um she could try. She could try to utilize her size, but I think it would really be wise if she just moves moves on the uh, out inside, outside a little bit, round, and just keep it, just keep it, keep you know, try to keep that distance and look for the big shot. I, I really think that yeah, Yan, she's got to get the finish. You know, I think Yan has got to get the finish. It can't be close rounds where you know she's getting taken down, then getting back up, landing a couple strikes you know, winning a couple of striking exchanges, but then getting taken down, you know, in each round, because then, you know, Wei Li will be working. So the judges, you know, they might sway it more towards her way. So <clears throat> five round fight definitely favors Wei Li, but I'm looking at Yan Zhan on to, she's actually got to get a stoppage, I think, to, to win this fight. You know, Wei Li, stoppage or decision, you know. So, uh, yeah. But, yeah, that, that's the question I got, though, man. Like, does does Wei Li, um, does, does Wei Li surpass? Does she break her own title defense record of one? And um, can she can she break that that curse, man, that is, that's just been going down? One title defense, one title defense. Like, does Yan Zhanan come in here and take that belt? Like, cause, cause before Wei Lee moves up to 125, I gotta see her get at least three good title defenses. Like, I gotta see her at least defend, the, like she did against Lamos, defend against Yan Zhanan, 
and defend against the winner of Verna and um, Tatiana Suarez, or maybe even one more. Like, I want to see Whaley get at least three to four title defenses. I kind of lowered the the number because I don't think she's going to go for five like Joanna did. She'll probably try to get the 125 here pretty soon now that she's, what, 36? Or, excuse me, not 36, 30. She's, let me see. August, she'll be 35. That's right, 35. She's still 34 right now. Yeah, 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 34 years old. So I don't know. I don't know. But we'll see. All right. So what's everybody's official pick on this one? One for Wei Li, two for Yan Zhanan. I'm going to, here's mine. I'm going to, there's mine. <laughs> I'm just confusing y'all. What do y'all got? One for Wei Li, two for Yan Zhanan. <laughs> I was just confusing y'all there. Brian said, I love Lamos, but Jan's movement would be a problem for her. Yeah, I think so. But Jan, Zanon, definitely, she she has a chance. Um, this is MMA. I mean, it's really hard now, like, especially even at flyweight and strawweight to just say something's going to be one-sided. Well, harder at 125, I'll say that. It's really hard to see, like, that belt staying in one hand over there but here you know um Wei Li has seen a little bit more than most people she has seen a lot more than Yan Zhanan and Carla wow the way Carla destroyed Yan Zhanan and then Wei Li just handles Carla they have that common opponent. I tell you one thing though, they both, hey, they both are mother to Jessica Andrade. Another set, right? And I mean, they've, yeah. That they they got hey, they walk with Jessica Andrade in the stroller. That's how they got it. I mean, they both they both taking her out in the first round, right? They both got first round knockouts. So yeah, Jessica Andrade is in their stroller. That, that, that just ain't a daughter right there. They, they got their baby in that stroller. Well, they, they walked apart with their man. Andra's in that stroller right there. They That's another one they share custody with. I'll claim the winner post fight. I ain't claiming nothing. I, this one, um, I'm just, I think Wei Lee's going to get it, but um, I think, you know, that's probably how it's going to go pretty much, right? How we feel. And I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, Zama said one, easy one. Marcus got two. Brian got two. Ooh, okay. All right. Six got one. BJ got one. Close from said three. <laughs> three for Suarez. Suarez submits both. Six is Whaley sleeps Suarez. Boom. Whaley sleeps Suarez. I don't know. I just don't know. No. Oh, BJ said three for Suarez, too. Oh, man. Y'all jumping ahead here. Hey, still got to get that Verna Suarez out the way, though, man. We got to get that Verna Suarez out the way. Got to see Suarez back at, back in full action. Hopefully we will, man. Man, yeah, they share that opponent. They both share a Carla fight, and they both share a Jessica Andrade fight. And anybody else they fought? Let me see, Claudia Gadelia. No, they know uh, that was uh, Claudia Gadelia, Angela Hill, Yan John. I fought them. Uh, Wei Lee fought Daniel Taylor, Tisha Torres, Jessica Aguilar. I'm just doing this off memory too. Um, let me see, she fought Rose, Joanna, Carla. Yon Jean on Carolina. No, that's about it. That's about it. Okay. All right. 
but yeah, I think we're going to have a good night of fights, y'all. Like, I, I think we've got a high number of finishes on this one. I don't really see too many decisions. Um, in, okay, here's another question. Including the men's fights, like, as far as a percentage, out of, uh, what, 13 fights? How many, how many decisions do we get? saturday night like how many decisions do y'all think we're going to get how many fights go the distance i really don't think that many are going to go the distance here okay uh oh let me see here three six nine twelve out of 12 fights, I don't know. I, I think maybe two go the distance. Uh, six said three fights go the distance. Okay. Okay, Zama's got two fights that go the distance. Uh, Brian said out of the 12 fights, three go the distance. Okay. Yes, yes, out of 12 fights. So... Yeah, out of 12 fights, I would say that, yeah, 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 yeah. I'd say, yeah, maybe like about three. I, I actually think the main card, main card is all finishes, honestly. Yeah, I think the main card goes a distance, so. I mean, no, no, I mean, the main card is all knockouts or finishes. Yeah. Yeah. Six said Kayla's going the distance. Okay. All right. Easy say, I say three as well. Yeah. I, I think around three as well. Like, I think three. Kind of think the figgy fight might. No, no, not that one. Hold on. Kayla and Holly, they kind of got the most potential to go the distance, I think out of the women's fights i'd say that's probably the one that goes the distance i don't think the uh, bo nickel fight does though i'm looking at something here i guess they got bo nickel on the prelims now he's like the headliner of the prelims i mean that's fair oh yeah yeah because al Jermaine is on the um al Jermaine sterling is the opener of the pay-per-view card okay that's better wait is he still on there okay is he still on there hold on was i missing that fight no it no 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 The way they had it scheduled, you no, know, they're going. You know, they're going to keep Bo Nickel on the pay per view card or whatever. They got it fixed two different ways. So I'm not sure. I hope Aljamain opens up the pay per view instead. Okay, who has the potential to be fight of the night? Okay, I think Andrade Marino. They're going to bring it. Who is going to be fight of the night though? Justin and Max. They have the potential. Oliveira and Armin, they have the potential. Like, Whaley and Yon, they could shoot. Yeah, I think Oliveira and Armin, they could be Justin and Max. That's those are two potentials. Uh, um, Prosca and then uh, Marina and Andrade. Um, any weird predictions? Hmm. I'm hoping not. I'm hoping we get no no, no contests and no DQs. I, I just want all finishes. Justin and Max are gonna steal it. Yeah, they might. They might when it comes to fin. Uh, they they might when it comes down to it though. Whaley versus Yawn, fight of the night. Maybe they bring. Maybe they bring that Yawana Whaley energy. Easy said the poets in his uh, KO of the night. Oh, man. Dang. Come on, Jamal. Don't do this, man. It's too soon, man. Ugh, man. Jamal Hill. Hey, coming back. First fight back. 
gotta take my hat off to him for coming right back against such a killing fight killer like that man mm, 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 mm. six said jamal sleeps alex i hope jamal is on point with his left hook man he gotta work that left hook in this fight man i'm still going with jamal man i gotta go with my man jamal in that fight all right let's look at the car before i go i'll give i'm gonna give some picks all around let's see i got figgy against cody um let me go with bobby green against jim jim miller I'll go with marina i'm not sure about turner versus uh renato might lean towards renato in that fight uh diego versus uh yosef lean towards diego I'm gonna go with Holly. I'm gonna go with Aljamain. I'm gonna go with Yuri. Okay, Justin. Guess I'll go with Bo. Uh, and I'm gonna go with Cody. I'm not betting on it. I'm gonna go with Charles, Whaley, and Jamal. Easy said, I'm not counting Hill out. It's a hit. It's a hit. It's a who hits, who clean first type of match. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's a hit. It's a, it's one of those. Like, it's whoever eats that clean punch right on the jaw, and then you just see him sleep, and that's it. And then we all are screaming. Hmm. But, yep, that's what it is. We got a good card coming up. I will be on live. And um, since it's a 300, you know, after the card, we'll have to do a little post-fight thoughts and link in the description. Easy, e man. Um, remember, link is open Saturday if you want to get on and get your thoughts after the card. I know you're supposed to get on after that Manon Aaron fight, but you didn't. But, I, you know, I ain't mad. I ain't mad. I always know BJ gonna come through because BJ got yeah BJ gonna be on <laughs> BJ will be up but yeah 300 we doing a whole card for sure I like Yuri I gotta go Yuri I like Yuri is I like Yuri BJ it's more of a fan pick here all right I know I know old boy been looking dangerous man Alexander. I hope he'll come back and get his spot, man. Like, put him in this dangerous fight, man. He's been going through some things, man. So, hopefully, he can. I still have no idea how Glover a lot, how Glover lived through that fight, let alone stay standing, man. I had a headache in that fight. I don't know how Glover stayed in that fight, man. Glover is just built different, man. That that old man is built different. How old is Glover now? Time I look at him, I be thinking he, shoot, 50 something, man. But I believe he's like, what, mid 40s? Mm. Six said Rocket sleeping, Yuri. Mm. He might. We'll see. Uh, Easy said, I thought you was going to, I just thought you was going to drop the link. I didn't want to seem like I was begging. Oh, I, I thought I I didn't drop the link that fight night. No, you know what? I was tired, man. Yeah, that's what it was. Fight night, it was, I was tired. Yeah, that's what it was because the fight, you know, Aaron Manone fight finished so late. I was tired, man. I think we all were. But, yeah, I'll do that on Saturday. Though. I'll drop it again. I will drop it again. Shoot, I might drop one right now, see if BJ want to give his picks real quick. I'm about to get off here, though, but. You know, if BJ, you want to get your picks real quick, it's an open link show. Be quick about it. You know, your picks on these women's fights, of course. I'm going through all 12 of these things. If not, I'm going to um, close this thing out. Go check this. Uh, go sit down and eat me some uh, food here in a minute. Okay. 
I gotta watch this. Gotta watch a couple more of these interviews. <clears throat> interviews here. Excuse me. Need some water here. All right. It's down. Here we go. Okay. Just had to close something out. But yeah, I'm going to be on Saturday. I need to go because I'm going to pull this food out of the oven. Uh, Lolita says she got Jalen Turner. Okay. Robot said Rocket should go be a tennis coach. I'd rather watch Carla Rose 5. <laughs> oh, man. Carla Rose 5. Ooh. Please don't do that to us. I, I hope we never get to that point. I don't think we ever will. That is a scary thought. Call the Rose 5 is scary. All right. I'm up out of here, y'all. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe on your way out. And um, I'll catch y'all UFC 300 Saturday night. I was just about, I was just about to say peace, y'all. But I was just about to say it. And there he is. What's up, BJ? All right, BJ, you hit that link. Where you at? I know you're there. Hold on. Can you, BJ, where you at? Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Hey, what's up, man? It's just like I was about to shut the door of the party, and then somebody come knocking. Hey, hey you know it. What's going on, man? Not much, man. Just wanted to, uh, you know, get your picks on uh, this 300 card. What's up? <sighs> oh man 300 is wild man uh i'm definitely gonna have to go with rockets on that fight i know i mean i get you a fan of uh yuri but i gotta go with rockets but as far as these wmma fights man oh, I lost you. <laughs> nah you ain't lost me bro i'm still here oh okay. yeah i'm gonna have to go holly man um because i just feel like holly been working, you know what I'm saying? She's been working. I, I trust Holly. I trust that Holly has fought higher competition. I'm trusted in the fact that Holly's been a UFC champion. I'm trusted in the fact that Holly don't duck no smoke. I'm trusted in the fact that Holly fought Chris Cyborg and banged it out. I'm trusting that Holly, you know, uh, had that fight. I'm sorry, man. I'm walking in the house. I'm trusted in the fact that Holly... You know, just I'm been there, done that, man. You know what I'm saying? And, I'm, and I know that Holly's smart enough to know that this is Ka that what Kayla Harrison's game plan is. You know what I'm saying? Like, she got to know what the game plan is. So, I'm, I, you know, and Holly is a cerebral fighter. You know what I'm saying? And she's aware. Holly's not a fighter that's not really, like, aware of things. You know, it kind of seemed like she wasn't aware of Maida Bueno Silva, but she she was. She just got caught up in that. You know what I'm saying? But, um... I'm gonna have to go with Holly, man. And then I'm going with Holly with knockout round two. And then <sighs> Yan Shao Nan Zhang Wei Li, man. Oh, you know, I like Yan Shao Nan. She's big, she hits hard, her striking is good, her stand up is good. But Zhang Wei Li, man, she just, Zhang Wei Li on a different level, man. Like she on a different level as far as like, you know, what she did to, Amanda Lima, how she schooled Lemos, how she did Carla. Like, the Carla thing is still kind of like a fresh wound for me, bro. Like, she did my girl dirty in there. You know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. you know, can, it, it, I feel like if Zhang Wei Li wants to wrestle, because she's been becoming this grappler heavy fighter, like, if she wants to wrestle, she'll, she'll out wrestle Yan Zhao Nan. Absolutely. She'll out wrestle Yan Zhao Nan. She'll beat Yan Zhao Nan. Uh, so I'm going and still for Zhang Wei Li for sure on this fight. Like I was saying in the comments, bro, like she ain't had no, Zhang Wei Li ain't had no soft touch. This is the softest touch that Zhang Wei Li done had. You know what I'm saying? People, somebody was like, soft touch. What you mean, soft touch? I'm just saying, man, like the rest of the girls that Zhang Wei Li beat, most of them she was supposed to lose to, bro, in my opinion. So that's how I'm looking at it. 
I like I'm looking at like she was supposed to lose the Joanna on JJ. She was supposed to lose to Carla Esparza. She was definitely supposed to lose to Jessica Andrade. You know, so it's just like, mm. you know, I don't know, man. It's, it's hard to count. It's hard. To, it's hard to bet against Zhang Wei Li. This Zhang Wei Li for sure. I don't know, bro. Okay. Yeah, but you do believe Yon is game, though, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yon is she's game. Yeah, she's okay. game for sure. Okay. Yeah, she yeah. she gonna she gonna go in there. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel the same way. Like I, I give Wei Li the edge. Of course, I mean I'm picking Wei Li, but I think Yon. I, I gotta tell those people, don't be surprised if her right hand does land and you see. Some, yeah, yeah. Don't be surprised yeah, now. You see some dancing from Wei Li. I'm just saying, like. Yeah, that right hand could land in this fight, but um, who do you got in uh, Marina Andrade fight? Oh, I forgot about that one. Mm -hmm. Um, oh, um, see, the only thing about this one, man, is you know I was hoping that Marina Rodriguez's power, you know, became you know was a, hold on, I'm getting stuff out the car, bro. Um, I was hoping that her power was going to be a thing in the fight with, uh. Amanda Lemos, bro, and she got cooked, you know? So it's just like, uh, 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 the uh, see, that's, uh, is that was hard, dude. Like, I'm sorry, Combo, that one hard, bro. Um, it's all right. Uh, let me see. You know, my heart is telling me Marina Rodriguez, but my heart was also telling me Mackenzie Dern. And I seen that even when you hit Jessica Andrade hard, she still can deliver. You know what I'm saying? Because I know you, I know what you, I know what you're gonna say about Mackenzie Dern or striking, but Dern was hitting her with some clean shots, dude. Like Dern hit, she hit Andrade with some hard, clean shots, and Andrade ate him. So I'm like, I wonder if – does Marina throw harder than Mackenzie Dern? Probably. Is she more accurate with it? Probably. But I don't know, man. It's going to come down to who – it's going to come down to who can rock who. That's what oh, I think. Because I don't really see Andrade like wrestling like that. No, even if she's kind of forced to. That's what I was saying earlier. I think that that's what she's going to have to do, or I, I think she might try. But actually seeing her do that now is kind of tough, you know? Yeah, that's what I'm saying, dude. Like, I don't really see her. I don't really see her drives out there trying to wrestle Marina Rodriguez. But with that being, Andrade is a smart fighter. Sometimes, well, most of the time she is. She's a, let, me, let, me, let me change that. She's not a smart fighter. She's an experienced fighter. So with that being said, her experience, and based off of what we've seen in, with Marina Rodriguez, Andrade might take her down. Andrade might control her. She's capable of it. She can do it. You know what I'm saying? Like Andrade is more than capable of taking Andra taking Marina Rodriguez down and out grappling her. Maybe even submitting her. Andrade is not a stranger to locking up a submission. So, um, you know, maybe she'll take that easy route. But you know, so with that being said, dude, knowing that there's that huge hole there, like they both have holes in their games, but I feel like Marina Rodriguez's hole is easier to expose than Jessica Andrade's when you're talking about in terms of them fighting each other. It's yeah, like, you know, yeah, it's, yeah. it's going to be easier for Andrade to expose Marina Rodriguez's holes than it's going to be for Rodriguez to expose Andrade's holes. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, it makes so, sense. It makes sense. Yeah, you know, yeah definitely. Because Andrade's been on a higher level too for a while. Right, like, right. She's, you know, she got there like off of freak power and freak strength where – you know, sometimes Marina, like when you see her get taken down, you be like, okay, that's probably what's going to hold her back, you know? Right. That's what I'm saying, dude. That's why I said, like, it'll be easier, dude. You know what I'm saying? Now, maybe, maybe Marina Rodriguez being tall, being long, you know what I'm saying? Being a striker, maybe she can expose something you know what i'm saying like maybe she can use those long shots because she'll throw them but the only thing i don't the only thing that bothers me about rodriguez is rodriguez she gets stale in the in the in the in the in the in-betweens the, in the in of a fight like she's she's very stale and stagnant sometimes 
You know what I'm saying? I don't. I think Andrade is gonna force her to make a mistake, like because Andrade is gonna be in her face. You know what I'm saying? But I just don't want her to get like st- you know get a, get a, get stale in there. Like don't get stale because yeah. if you let Andrade come at you swinging, dude, she's gonna come at you swinging. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> she yeah, you know. <laughs> Yeah, like put a jab in, like I want to see her put a jab in Andrade's face. Rose was able to do it. Andrade was able to do it. I mean, um, uh, Joanna was able to do it, you know? Oh, man, I just show you Joanna was a master with that jab, boy. Like she was a master with that. When that, she throw that jab, man, Joanna be controlling you with that. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like it was the Matador dance. You know, it was the bull and the Matador when uh, when when Joanna was 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 doing I do you making me want to go back and watch that fight dude like I'm going to have to go back and watch that fight again just to look at it you know what I'm saying because Joanna dude and every and what's so crazy about it I remember like it was yesterday everybody thought that she was going to knock Joanna out and I'm like I don't know about that you know I'm like I don't know man like she might get some hits off on Joanna but Yoana is a you know that Muay Thai man she knows what she's doing she's great at distance management you know what I'm saying like she can she can she can overcome this power, you know what I'm saying? And she did, dude, and did it beautifully. Like Andrade yeah. was so Andrade was so mad in there, dude. Like it was crazy. But is 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 Rodriguez capable of doing that? Probably not. And Andrade, you know, tried to take Joanna down. You know what I'm saying? And she couldn't do it. Is the Marina Rodriguez takedown defense isn't even on the same planet as Joanna Young J Not no. even not even on the same planet. Joanna stuffed every last one of them takedowns on Drive. On Drive's tried to pick up the slammer. She tried to do everything, and it didn't work. None of it worked. None mm-hmm. of it worked. Nope. You know? So it's just, ugh. I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to go on Drive. Okay. All right. I got to go on Drive. I mean, good. I mean, definitely a good pick. I mean, you can't yeah. really go wrong with Andrade in certain situations, but um, I, I'm, I'm going to go with Marina. I'm going to stick with Marina on this one. I just think that. If she's able to, you know, keep her range and let her accuracy take over and just, you know, commit more to a jab and, you know, than she has in the past. Yeah. Yeah. I think she could still pull it out and she might pull this one off. No, it ain't going yeah. three rounds, though. I know it ain't going no, three. It ain't gonna do no, hell no. Marina might get slept. Marina might get slept. Yeah. 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 Um. Yeah, she might get slept, dude. So I'm I'm, I'm going with Jessica Andrade. Okay. All right. Cool. Um, that's your picks. You got Wei Lee, Holly, and Andrade. Okay. Cool. Cool. All right. Well, uh, BJ, I just wanted to get yeah, you. Like I said, I got, uh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Go ahead and close it out, bro. I feel you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to get you on to get your, you know, get some knowledge out of you, get some knowledge on these fights. But um, oh. His uh, thing done closed out. But uh, that was BJ from No Filter in May. I was just going to say, BJ, um, you know, if you jump on live tomorrow, you feel that urge to jump on live, I'll be over there tomorrow. But, uh, yeah, let me get, roll up out of here now and uh, hit that like, subscribe on your way out if you haven't. Easy said also something to think about. Holly, she's a bigger band weight that fought at 145. Kayla is going to have some trouble in the strength department. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I agree with that. I agree with that. Um, yes, yeah. Um, Holly, yeah, Holly's fought at 145. So yeah, Holly, I would favor more like stronger. That's what I said. In that fight, I could see Holly's old woman strength being a factor more, but in the in the style of fighting with um Kayla and Misha, I kind of favor uh I kind of favor Kayla a little bit more in that type of fight with Misha Tate, but yeah, Holly. How she uses her strength a little bit differently. I would pick uh, Holly being able to use it in those necessary uh, little areas, like pushing people off and turning people. You know. Oh, okay, yeah, BJ. Yeah, you back on. My bad, bro. My bad. Yeah, I actually, hit it. against the cage is going to be interesting. But Holly don't need to be there though. Like she yeah. don't need to be there because, and I get like Holly is good at framing on the cage. You know what I'm saying? And, and just kind of stalemating you there. Like, yeah, that's good against people like. The people she's fought, but Kayla Harrison, judo, you know, the sweeps and the upper body strength and that core strength and stuff like that. Like, I don't know if Holly should put that to the test, but I think Holly should, you know, re- the, the key to, I think the key for Kayla, for her to beat Kayla Harrison is frustration. 
Like frustrate Kayla Harrison. You know what I'm saying? Don't let her take you down. Hit her with them pop shots. You know what I'm saying? Them kicks. We'll be careful with the kicks. You know what I'm saying? But um, uh, you know, hit her with the pop shots up top to the face because Kayla Harrison don't like to get hit. Clearly, you know what I'm saying? She don't mm-hmm. like to get hit. Frustrate yeah. her, and, then, and when you frustrate her, the takedowns get sloppier. You know what I'm saying? Like things get sloppy, and then that's when you can take advantage of. That's when Holly can take advantage of her. You know what I'm saying? Get her tired. You know what I'm saying? Get, get Kayla Harrison tired and then get her tired and upset and frustrated at what's going on and then let loose on her. Okay. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. We'll see, though, man. We'll see. You know, but the, the, the thing is, if Kayla Harrison wins, like, you know, she's got a she's got she's got some tough opponents ahead of her if she wins. Oh, yeah. You know? yeah, she, so, yeah that's like, this is just the beginning. And we already right. looking at Holly to win this fight. So, yeah, she's she's got All a. Right. Yeah, she's going to be up against something. Not just the fighters, but the weight, too. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, dude. That's what I'm saying. Because she got, because I was just getting ready to say, because every fight that Kayla's going to have in the UFC, it's going to be two fights. Mm-hmm. Every fight is a double fight for Kayla Harrison, the weight and then the opponent. And that's some good. of these girls, some of these girls, do some of these 35ers with this cardio, you know what I'm saying? With these, with, you know, and, 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 you know, even some of the girls that's ranked, you know, six and below. You know what I'm saying? Look at their cardios. You know what I'm saying? Like, look at uh, Yana Kunitskaya's cardio. Yana, Yana can get Yana will clinch fight you all day long. You know what I'm saying? Yana will clinch fight you all day long. Look at the cardio. Look at uh, people like Penny Kianza, people like Norma Juman. Look at people like Misha Tate. You know what I'm saying? Like, she's gonna have some problems. She has some problems at 135. Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? These girls ain't these girls. Some of these girls ain't killing themselves to get to 35. Not yeah, like that. Cool. Oh yeah, yeah. That's what's going to come. walking around a buck eighty. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. You know, what I'm I mean, a strong, a strong one eighty. Mm-hmm. You know, and not you know, the, even some of these big girls, I don't think got that big. I mean, that's definitely like featherweight territory. You know what I'm saying? But I, to me, I just, I still feel like she knew better to come into the UFC when there was actually a featherweight division. Like, I just felt like she knew better. You know what I'm saying? She didn't want to fight Felicia Spencer. She didn't want to fight somebody that somebody that can be big in there with her. You know what I'm saying? Somebody like Spencer or Dumont at 45 or Megan Anderson or Chris Cyborg. Like she didn't want that smoke, bro. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And and now it's I don't feel like it's I feel like it's even worse for in her favor now because she's got to cut the weight. She would have been more avid. She would have been, it would have been more advantageous for her to join the UFC earlier and fight at 145 pounds. Because she wouldn't be battling the scales. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Then she could have put on some competitive fights with Spencer. You know what I'm saying? With people like that. You know what I'm saying? But that's not how it happened. You know, and she just, I mean, I, I feel like Kayla Harrison, Cyborg must really struck a nerve with Kayla Harrison for her to make these kind of moves. Like these are drastic moves, Combo. Oh, these yeah. are drastic. Yeah. These are like drastic measures that this girl is going to. To avoid Chris Cyborg. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I mean, bro. this is crazy. Bruh. Yeah, and, and, and the whole time she calling her out. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> man. Like, mm. you don't get it, man. Bro, Cyborg, if 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 Holly goes in here and knocks this girl out, how <laughs> Cyborg gonna eat that shit up, bro? Mm. Cyborg gonna eat that shit up, bro. Cyborg at this point. Cyborg can ignore Kay- if if Holly goes in here and beats Kayla. Cyborg can ignore Kayla Harrison for the rest of her life. Like Cyborg wouldn't wouldn't ever have to troll Kayla Harrison or respond to any trolls from Kayla Harrison. Nothing, bro. She won't mm-hmm. have to do nothing anymore. Man, it's like so- you went to the UFC and got knocked out. Yeah, it, it's it's that that's what I'm saying. Like it just that's what's question I was asking earlier. Like, you know, um, is she chasing greatness by coming to the UFC when you had greatness in your hands at at um at the PFL Bellator merger? You know what I mean? Like right. it made more sense at that time because when you go to Bellator, I mean when you go from okay, Bellator merges. All right, like I said, I was telling close from earlier, you got to fight some of these girls just to build your name up or your style and skills. But then you get to fight one of the best fighters in the world in Cyborg. But 
go to the UFC, you're fighting in a division that isn't the same. That you don't belong in. Yeah, that and you then, you gotta call, then you got to call a man the out of retirement. Come on. It just seems yeah. seems a little different, you know? I ain't seen it and done that. She had some good fights ahead of her at Bellator. Leah McCourt. Yeah, Jackson, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. She, had some, she had some decent fights. Sarah McMahon, or no, nah, not Sarah McMahon. Sarah McMahon would have got beat. Sarah <laughs> McMahon. Sarah, Sarah McMahon gets out grappled too much for me to be confident in her grappling. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, come on, man. These 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 high school grapplers, these high school wrestlers out grappling her, bro. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, Misha Tull was a high school wrestler, bro. She out grappled the fuck out of Sarah McMahon. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Kaz and Gano out grappled the fuck out of Sarah McMahon. Like, these girls out grappled. Leah McCourt did too, didn't she? Leah McCourt did stop Sarah McMahon. She did. First yeah. round stoppage. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So I mean, she, she get out grapple everywhere she goes. So I mean, but that was the, what was the, what's the girl name? What's the what's the other girl name over at, at Bellator? That, I mean, at PFL that you like, Marina? Oh, Mahat. Sarah Sarah Collin. That's the girl at Bellator. What's the girl at PFL? Oh, the girl at Pel- Um, let me think. Is it Marina Mahaki? Yeah, Mahat- yeah, 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 her. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, like these are big, strong girls. But oh, I forgot about Sarah Collins. Yeah. Yeah, Sarah Collins is legit, bro. Yeah, Sarah Collins is about to be um f- who is she fighting? Uh she got a fight coming up. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, Sarah Collins is legit. So yeah, dude. You know, and those those are your beat beat those featherweights. Yeah. And then and then we'll talk. You know what I'm saying? Like right. then we'll talk about you being the best. Like beat those featherweights, you know what I'm saying? And then let's see what's going on. But no, she you know she didn't want that smoke, man, because she knew all roads led to a fight with Chris Cyborg, and Kayla Hansen wanted to stay as far away from Chris as far away from Chris Cyborg as possible. Mm-hmm. That's crazy, dude. That's crazy. It is, man. But yeah, B, I'm gonna like I'm gonna shut this down. I'm gonna, I'm gonna shut it down again here. And um, I was gonna say you might have missed it when you got cut off. I was gonna say yeah, if you if you feel like jumping on tomorrow, man, I'll be over there, man. Hey, hey, yeah, I was thinking about jumping on and talking about these fights. So, yeah, I'll be on. Okay, bro. Well, I will catch you on the next one uh, for sure. Yeah, tomorrow night then, man. Yes, sir. Hey, peace out, chat. Peace out, combo. All right. All right, I'm going to close this thing out again, but I wanted to say this. Uh, Lolita put this in the comments. She said, respect, respect to all the gentlemen giving WMMA their proper respect. This sport is not easy for women. It is hard in many ways, yet they put themselves out there. Yeah. It's hard sport for everybody, you know, but um, yeah, uh, you don't get a lot of, yeah, you don't have a lot of women actually supporting WMA like that, which is kind of I- ironic, ain't it? Like, you don't have a lot of like WMA women based WMA channels. Like, you don't even see like a lot of the reporters out there talking to women as much. Like, you know, a couple of the ones you see out there that be trolling right now with the men and stuff, like, you don't really see them interview a lot of the women. Like, Megan Anderson will, for the most part, I believe she does, but you don't really see a lot of other men out there that cover, like, even if you don't cover the women specifically, like, you don't really see them cover the fights just as much. Like, you don't, unless it is UFC, like, you don't, you don't, you just don't. But yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, respect there. Um, shout out to Lolita. But I'm about to jump off here, y'all. Again, hit that like and subscribe. I'm out. Combo Breaking 99. Peace.